All right, uh, doing a break job on a 2009 Mitsubishi Outlander. Uh, gonna start with the rear brakes today. Um, as always, uh, be safe. Uh, use jack stands when uh, supporting your vehicle. And both sides, make sure you're, you're safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the wheel off and uh, I'll go from there. Thanks. Okay, so I got the wheel off, and we can see now uh, we have the rotor and uh, caliper assembly. And what we're going to want to do first is because uh, these have shoes that are inside the rotor, we're basically going to take this off like this. Okay, it's just a little rubber uh, grommet. Okay, and <clears throat> You can turn this all the way down to the bottom, right around there, let's say six o'clock. And then, sorry. When you look in there, you'll, there'll be an adjusting wheel. You can't see it right now. But uh, you have to adjust that to uh, release the, the shoes. And uh, that'll allow you to take off the uh, rotor. But first what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take off the caliper. Getting a little ahead of myself. Of course the light doesn't want to stay. Alright. So basically your two slider bolts uh, here and, and one down here. 14 mil or 9 sixteenths. What am I using there? 9 sixteenths. Anyhow, I'll get that off and uh, we'll continue. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, loosened the uh, slider bolts. This one I've already taken out. This one I've kind of left in as a pivot. Um, some people will sometimes uh, basically move the caliper inwards. That's basically to uh, let the, the, the piston of the caliper go in a bit. So I'm prying it this way. And what that will do is basically release it off of the rotor, making it a little bit easier to lift up and out. Okay, so now I'll just take the, I'll take this whole assembly right out. A few more threads to go there. Okay, so there's your slider. Pin out, I'll put it down with the other one. <laughs> okay, so now this can come right up and over. Okay, so I put it up there out of the way. I'm trying to put too much stress on the uh, hydraulic brake hose there. It is flexible rubber, and uh, depending on the age, it could crack. Uh, and uh, I've adjusted this the hole there like I was talking about. Just took a screw, put a screwdriver in there. Like so. And you gotta catch the wheel and turn it. So this is gonna come right off now. It's kinda hard doing this with one hand. Okay. And now you can see behind there, there is the brake shoe assembly. So when you pull up on your handbrake, these guys move out this way and out that way. And that adjustment wheel that I was referring to is right down there. And when you wanna, you gotta turn it this way and that using your screwdriver through the hole of the rotor. And when we reassemble it, I'm going to adjust that outwards to make the distance between the shoe and the draw and the uh, and the rotor the bare minimum so when you pull up the handbrake it won't go too far here's our inboard pad there's still some more life on it but I was getting a pretty bad pulsation you can see the the rotor wore it away unevenly there this is basically because I was too cheap and I changed just the pads last time and not the rotor. And the rotor caused everything to wear out <coughs> extra quickly. 
<coughs> anyhow, I will uh, get everything ready and continue shortly. Okay, here is the new rotor. We have to get it out of the bag. All right, now from the factory, these are obviously placed in the bag, but I'm not sure if you can see that there is a bit of an oily film that's on there, and that's basically to protect the rotor from rusting, or to prevent it from rusting. Now, obviously, you can't put an oily rotor when you're putting on new pads, or even with old pads for that matter. So what you have to do prior to putting them on, putting them on you have to use some sort of brake cleaner, and this will get rid of the oily film on the rotor and allow the pad and rotor to uh, break in together without any problems. Okay, so my rotor has been cleaned off. No more oily film on it. Now the next step that you're going to want to take is to put some anti-seize onto the hub. And this here is your hub. That's basically where your, your, uh, your studs are for your nuts. Okay, I have a little bit on there already, but I'm going to put a little bit more just to show you what I'm talking about. Here's your anti-seize compound. You don't need to overdo it, just put enough there. That basically makes it easier on yourself or the next guy who's going to be doing the brake job. Makes it easier for the uh, rotor to come off. You can just put a little bit on the each nut there, prevents the rusting. Okay, next step is to go ahead and mount up the rotor. Like so. That's it, right? Basically line up the your studs and you're gonna go in here and you're gonna adjust the the uh, adjuster so the shoes are out to a certain degree. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. What I wanna do is these mounts, these are where your pads are gonna ride on, these like little shiny silver things here. You're gonna wanna change those if your brake pads come with them. This is what they look like. Basically your, your pad sits there, sits on that and, and rides on that. And it helps to prevent brake squeal. And just basically pop it out and put the new ones in. And also, you're gonna wanna put some lubrication on here. Maybe uh, some some kind of synthetic grease so it doesn't bother the pads too much. And that also help with brake squeal. <clears throat> the other thing is uh, to adjust this the adjuster, okay, just to remember when you're adjusting these, the, sh the, the rotor is going to be covering this, so you're not going to really get a lot of visibility. So it'd be good to determine which way this wheel has to turn to make it open up, to make it spread open. Uh, I've actually determined that turning it downwards like this will make it open up, and that will reduce your distance between. The, uh, the shoes and the and the rotor. You can do that prior to, but just don't don't over adjust it. Otherwise, it'll be hard to get the the rotor on. Okay, and now uh, we'll be back. Okay, so this is where we are now. Rotor's on. Uh, as you can see, I also put the, uh, the back pad on there. Okay, let's put that on first because I'll be putting the rotor back against it. And you'll see that on the bottom there, there is a, uh, a basically a, a brake wear indicator right here. And that brake wear indicator, basically when the pad gets too low, that will make contact with the rotor and it will start to squeal. And that'll alert you to take your car into for service or to tell you that you have to change them. <clears throat> you wanna put this clip on the trailing edge so the, ro the rotor, when driving forward, will turn this way. So this will be your trailing edge. This is your leading edge, and this is your trailing edge, right here. Uh, also, <clears throat> I put a, a nut there, 
this helps to keep the rotor in one, one place when you're while you're reassembling it helps to prevent other things from getting in behind there between the uh, the hub and the rotor if the rotor is sits uh, flat onto the hub you could get a, a vibration out of that I've also adjusted the brake shoes okay so what I did I adjusted them all the way out till basically I couldn't move my rotor and I just once I got to that point I took it back a step until I could move it so basically now you know that as soon as you pull your handbrake up it's gonna open up and make contact and hold your wheels when you apply your parking brake okay next step is to replace the outboard pad which will basically clip on to this area of the caliper here okay just a moment ago I mentioned uh, putting on the outboard pad but before we do that we gotta get that piston back in can't really do it by hand I mean, if you were Superman or the Hulk maybe you could but what we're going to do is, I'm going to use a, basically a big pair of channel locks and the old inboard pad, the one I showed you earlier. I'm going to put that basically flat across here. Okay, so you see I put the pad across there. I'm going to take my channel locks as best as I can with my one hand here. Okay. Basically, again, my one hand is giving me some problems here. One second. See there, I have my channel locks wrapped around the base of the caliper and the top. Again, the pad is placed over the piston. Now, basically, you want this piston to go in as straight and evenly as possible. This is why we're using the surface of the pad to help us with that. There are some specialty tools to help you do this as well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze it down, nice and easy, not ex using excessive force. We don't wanna force it in, because we have to give the time, we have, to, we, have, we have to give the brake fluid time to get back into the master cylinder, and we don't wanna push too hard or apply too much force to the, to the seals that are really meant to just push fluid in. Okay, so that's all the way down to the bottom. Okay. And like I was saying before, I'm gonna mount up my outboard pad. Okay, you see there's some clips on here. And these clips are just gonna basically go over top there. Okay, and you see these little these little notches right here. Sorry, you see the little notches there? There are corresponding notches inside the caliper that those will fit into. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze those on. Okay, so I have the caliper back on. I've got the top caliper bolt in. Okay, it's not tightened up all the way yet. I still have to do the bottom one. But I noticed the bottom one was kinda, kinda almost rusty looking. It had some debris on it. And that probably has something to do with the amount of pulsation I was getting and it gave probably wore it out prematurely. It won't focus there for whatever reason. Uh, best bet is to clean it off with uh, a wire wheel or wire brush and get it as smooth as possible. And also don't forget to apply slider lube, which is basically a synthetic lubrication that won't damage the rubber. Okay, there's the focus finally. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up and I'll show you what it looks like after. Okay, so. Uh, focus, focus. Uh, anyhow, you can kind of have an idea here uh, how much cleaner this is. Okay, just by running a wire brush on it. Higher revolution, maybe if you have a wire brush on a wire, on a grinder maybe. Not to use a grinder, but basically, I used this. I mounted my bolt up in the, in the vise, and I ran a, uh, a wire brush on my drill. Got it nice and clean. Uh, you might want to try and get inside 
the anchor as well where the uh, slider is going to go in right in here there may be some residue or some rust or something built up inside there and so if you have anything to get in there to access that basically you want this caliper to move as freely as possible so when you get your foot off the brake it'll release and not hold down and wear out your pad anyhow don't forget to lube it up with some slider grease here we are all done well one wheel at least i still have three more to go uh, make sure you tighten all your bolts up basically the two bolts your slider bolts don't overdo it just enough to so they don't go anywhere and don't forget to take off the nut you had there before you try putting the rim back on and don't forget to put the plug back in through your adjuster port okay uh, I'm working on the other side here I know you've we've already gone through one side but I don't know if you can recall or not the anchor that essentially goes right here uh, but the other way rather okay no sorry Duh. okay so uh, I took out the slider bolts and they came out really stiff really hard so what I've done is I've taken the anchor out okay the anchor for the pad and I'm going to take uh, a brush and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to clean that out because I don't want any problems following me around if you know what I mean okay both of those holes clean them out with a wire brush and put lots of slider lube okay just wanted to give you a heads up okay I just took my uh, drill and I got luckily enough to find an old wire brush thin one that could fit into my slider bolt holes there and I went in there nice and slow yeah, I don't want to go too fast with it and now I'm going to use that brake cleaner that we used on the rotors I'm going to use some in there to get the, all that gook out of there make sure it's nice and clean okay back again 2009 Mitsubishi Outlander all four brakes and rotors pads and rotors being replaced rears are done starting on the front it's uh, pretty much going to be the same as the rears, except you don't have to make any adjustments here because there's no uh, shoes in there. Okay, so that, that should pop right off. Any resistance, you might have to use a, a hammer and knock them out. And again, we'll start with the slider bolts. Take those out. Take the caliper off. Pads, rotors. Oh yeah, and the other difference is that this anchor has to come off to get the rotor off. So we'll... Uh, start tackling this All right, I have the caliper off, okay uh, another thing you'll notice here is that The outboard pad doesn't actually fit onto the caliper with those two clips it, it sits inside here With the on the anchor There's gonna be these clips here that we're gonna have to change Providing the new set comes with them. I haven't even checked that yet and going back here let me get a light uh, going on back here okay you'll see the uh the two bolts one and two 17 millimeter bolts bolts that um, you'll have to take out to remove this anchor okay and again you have to take this off in the, to in order to get the the rotor off okay that's nice and loose already sweet Okay, I'll uh, get back to it when I get the anchor on the bench. Okay, I'm here on the bench with the anchor assembly from the front driver's side or the front left side. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and, yeah, sorry, you can't even see that. <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and take these pads out. They don't want to come, you might have to give them a, a tap. Okay. Now those 
where the pads there. Yeah, they're pretty worn down. And the anchor. Okay, so I with my new pads, I got new uh, uh, mounts that will go onto the anchor uh, onto the anchors. Uh, I'm not sure that's the exact word for them, but there they are. If by chance your brake pads didn't come with these, then what you were gonna do is take a wire brush, clean off that surface of the ones that of the ones that are on there, so that the pads can move along there without much resistance. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, pull those off, clean them up. You can see I'll use my wire brush or this wire brush, whichever one is easier, and get them cleaned up. And I might actually go in there and use my little my little tiny guy here and get inside there and clean those out too while I have it on, on the bench. Okay, be back soon. All right, here we are back at the front driver's side wheel. You can see the rotor is off on the ground there. I've already applied some uh, anti-seize to the hub. I don't know if you can see it there. And I've retracted the caliper piston using a pair of channel locks. And now I'm going to go ahead and get restart reassembling. Uh, there's the brake anchor with the new clips inside and our new rotor. And don't forget to wash off that rotor with some brake cleaner to get the oil off. Okay, and I'll be back once it's back together. Hey guys, uh, in the middle of reassembling here and I thought I'd take the time to make a note about uh, when you see grease on the rotor, if you happen to uh, by accident uh, while you're reassembling, you know, if you had some grease on your fingers or if you had any kind of lube in here and if it gets in contact with the rotor, uh, take the time now to wipe that off, spray some brake clean on a rag and uh, and get it cleaned up. We don't want to contaminate the uh, the pads. Uh, you can just do that by rotating this, your your rotor, okay? And you can only do that if you're in neutral or if your other wheel is off the ground, okay? And also remember uh, to install your uh, brakes wheel indicator on the trailing side, okay? So. The wheel's turning this way when you're going forward, so it's going to come into contact with it going forward this way, okay? And it goes on the inboard, inboard side, like so. Doing this with one hand, it's not that great. Anyhow, I'll get this done and I'll get a snapshot of it when, when I'm all finished. All right, there it is, all reassembled and put back together. Uh, one thing I had forgotten to mention uh, earlier was when I was uh, putting back the anchor bolts, okay? The anchor bolts, that's the bolts that go back here, the 17 mil, and also on the rear okay the anchor for the rear the one i took off which was a 14 mil uh, i did use a bit of a, a loctite on the bolt on the bolts uh, medium just a couple uh, uh, drips should be enough uh, to make sure that the bolt doesn't uh, walk out and the next step after this is obviously i'm going to do the other side now and we're going to go ahead and, and pump up the brakes uh, basically we're going to do that uh, slowly uh, we'll depress the brake pedal uh, approximately, right? No light in here, right? There you go. We'll go ahead and, okay, we'll press that down uh, about a, a quarter, quarter of the way, not all the way down. We need to let the brake pedal or the fluid build up slowly, okay? And as you go about a quarter to no, no more or no more than halfway down and you keep pressing it up and down, uh, you'll feel the brake pedal getting hard and it'll come right up, which means everything's good. And, and also we'll check the e-brake, emergency brake handle to make sure that it comes up to a, a good enough distance there. And then lastly, we take it for a test drive. Okay, just finished the uh, passenger side and I uh, ran into a little problem and that was basically the inboard pad 
uh, didn't want to go in. And it actually happened on the driver's side, but I didn't mention it. Uh, you know, I, uh, it matched up with the old pad in terms of I held it back to back and they were the same. Well, they seem that way. I think, uh, I think the aftermarket shims, uh, the clips here may have uh, taken up a little bit of space. So what I ended up doing was I took it over to the grinder here and I just took off a bit from the end focus okay I just took off a bit from the end okay just not not too much maybe a just a fraction of my you know I took a little bit off making sure to keep the same shape at least on the end went and tried it first one went on on the first try the second one I had to grind off a little bit more and actually and a little bit more on the top as well so that was one thing and the other thing was that uh, uh, I didn't bring it before either it was the shims uh, I don't know if you can see it here get us some focus all right the shims are this area here you can see the little clips on there okay those are those will help to um, reduce brake squeal because brakes naturally want to squeal so we have to install these these shims to provide a buffer between the caliper and the pad so just make sure you have them. Mine, uh, the ones I got, they came pretty much already attached on. You can see it there, they're already attached on. Yours uh, may come separately and you have to clip them on. So make sure you use them, don't discard them. Otherwise you might find yourself with uh, a pretty wicked brake squeal as you're braking. All right, car is making noise again. Um, well, we're all done the brakes, now we're in the car. And we're gonna pump up the brakes. Remember, we're, uh, we're not gonna go all the way down. We're just gonna start quarter way, halfway down. And there, you can feel the brakes already come up. Uh, you probably wanna check the brake fluid level too, just to make sure it's okay, it's not pouring over. And we can check the handbrake as well. That's pretty good. It was, it was coming up to all the way before almost, so it's a lot better. I'm satisfied with that. And that's it. So now you want to take it for a test drive and uh, make sure it's all good. You don't want to go crazy speeding and slam the brakes. You want to give the brakes some time to break in, but you also want to make sure that they're working. And there we go. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Some guys may do it differently, as always. I've seen a lot of how-to videos on YouTube, and I thought I would contribute as I was doing my brakes. Again, hope you enjoyed.